Hey guys, welcome to Glaciers and Glaciation. Um, I'm trying a new screencasting software, so bear with me a little bit. Uh, I have about 15 minutes per segment, so I'll keep these shorter and break them up into a couple pieces for, for each chapter when I'm doing these, probably. All right, so glaciers. Um, hey, there's Yosemite. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm going to have to talk about Yosemite a fair amount as we're going through this. Uh, and it makes me a bit sad. But anyways, um, you guys should know what a glacier is. I'm not gonna read over the definition. You guys can do that. I'd highly suggest that you guys take notes um, and write these things down. Uh, it'll help ingrain them, uh, especially since we're not spending nearly as much time and uh, in talking to you guys, you're not spending nearly as much time thinking about this stuff. Um, Couple things to note though, uh, different types of terrains, alpine, uh, this is up in the mountains and then continental are covering very large areas, uh, co entire continents. Uh, so think of the ice ages uh, and what was going on back then. About 70% of the world's supply of freshwater is locked up in glacial ice. There's a lot of freshwater. If you remember when we talked about water, we talked a little bit about that. There's a, uh, different types of glaciers uh, again uh, and the the way that they're made uh, is I feel like I'm going to be talking about this again but anyways um, it's snow and as snow settles it it or as snow falls uh, over time it gets compacted and it starts to recrystallize so if you've ever made a snowball think of you know that that nice white fluffy snow and as you compress it it changes its consistency and you know it doesn't hurt nearly as much to get hit by a, a snowball that isn't as compacted but once you start compacting it uh, it becomes very very different and so that snow changes to what's called fern uh, and you can look at uh, these diagrams uh, over here and in your book you're going to be able to see them a lot better as usual um, and then uh, over time that fern uh, changes into glacial ice um, these can only form when there's more snow that accumulates during the winter uh, than what melts away during the spring and summer. So if there's a low snowfall and uh, it all melts away during the summer, obviously we're not going to have a glacier, but when we start having more snow falling than melting uh, over time, that builds up and we end up with a glacier. And so that's why we're seeing a lot of these glaciers disappear uh, is because as overall global temperatures warm up. Summers are longer, there's more melting time and less uh, time for that, that snow and ice to stay frozen. So uh, a lot of our glaciers are receding and disappearing. Um, Alpine glaciers uh, form in, uh, in valleys in mountainous regions. Uh, so up in the Sierra Nevada, we still have glaciers, uh, not a whole lot of them and not massively huge. Uh, but as we go more towards the poles, we start seeing a lot larger glaciers, uh, some very amazing and incredible ones up in Canada and, and northwards. Uh, and again, continental glaciers are those big ice sheets. Um, so at the poles, uh, we can see uh, some of that. And let's see, uh, we'll go ahead and go to the next slide here. So distribution of glaciers, obviously the closer to the poles we get, uh, the more common they're going to occur, um, but they can occur anywhere. In the US, Alaska obviously has the most glaciers uh, and then Washington state uh, comes next. So you go up to places like Mount Rainier and, and in those mountains, uh, there's a lot of a lot of glaciers. Uh, approximately 10% of the Earth's surface is covered by glaciers, and 85% um, of all glacier ice is in Antarctica. And it's pretty substantial. So if all of that ice were to melt, sea level would rise about 213 feet. So obviously flooding a lot of the coastal cities. That's that's very, very substantial. Uh, so a lot, of, a lot of ice locked up in uh, our poles, especially Antarctica. I tried pausing it, hopefully it's working and I've come back. Um, anyways, uh, this is just a, a recap of what I've already gone over. 
thought this was in here again. Uh, so again, the formation and, and growth of glaciers. Uh, and again, think of a, a snowball if you've ever had a chance to, to mess around in the snow. Um, I think that'll kind of give you a good, good idea of kind of what's happening. Uh, but we're talking obviously a lot larger scale and over a longer period of time. Um, the things that cause a glacier to move is, is gravity. Uh, and that, that gl glaciers go downhill. Uh, a term that you're going to need to know is ablation, and that's loss of a glacier, and that's due to melting, uh, evaporation, or calving. Uh, if you've seen the videos of glaciers coming to this, the ocean and, and big chunks of ice peeling off and forming icebergs, uh, that's an example. Okay, uh, budgets. Uh, when, we're, when we're looking at glaciers, they're either advancing or receding. Uh, and an advancing glacier is when we have a positive budget. There's more snow than uh, loss of snow. And then a receding glacier is the obvious. So there's less snow uh, than it gains, and it's a shrinking uh, glacier. So the zone of accumulation is where snow is added. The zone of ablation, uh, as we just learned what ablation is, that's where we have the melting and calving of icebergs, uh, and we're losing uh, the, the glacier. And then the equilibrium line separates that accumulation and ablation zone and uh, will advance or retreat depending on the climate. So again, uh, take a look at your book and uh, this is a good diagram. Again, I apologize. Uh, everything trying to cram into a small screen, probably on your Chromebooks or phone, is not going to be very visible. We're looking at movement. There's, there's um, the glacier... Um, moves in different ways at uh, different uh, locations of the glacier. Okay, so again, uh, it moves down slope. It's due to gravity. Uh, basal sliding is a sliding the glacier over the underlying rock. So at the bottom of the glacier right here, um, that's our basal uh, sliding. And then it's uh, we have uh, in the kind of more middle uh, or lower to middle part, we have plastic flow, and that's movement that occurs uh, in a, a more plastic nature, all right? So more moldable, bendable, uh, not nearly as rigid as the rigid zone, which is in kind of the, the top 40 meters of the glacier. Uh, and that's the, uh, the part that is just very, very rigid, and it's going to crack and break, and that's where we have crevasses. And those are fractures that are formed in that upper portion of the glacier uh, where it cracks. So if you ever watched a mountaineering movie or anything where they're traveling across a glacier on ice, climbing mountains, there's these big cracks that form in the ice that they fall into and are always having to watch out for. Uh, take time, watch a, watch a good movie. Uh, an excellent movie uh, that kind of shows what it's like to climb a mountain and go over crevasses and things like that. Any of the Everest type movies, um, preferably a documentary and not the Hollywood versions of those things. Uh, and I can't think of any of the names currently right now, but also uh, a fantastic movie. It's called Meru, M-E-R-U, and uh, just beautifully shot of uh, a, a mountaineering expedition uh, that will, uh, I, I think you'll find very interesting. Uh, if if you have any interest in mountaineering, adventure, and beautiful scenery. Anyways, um, glaciers flow. They're fastest at the top uh, center of the glacier and slowest along the margins uh, and along the bottom. So you'll notice this uh, curve right here. I just walked in the office. Um, anyways, uh, we were talking about, oh, the, uh, the glacier flow uh, and how it moves at different speeds. So... Uh, along the sides of the glacier, along the mountains at the bottom, that's going to move slower because of the friction against the sides and, and bottom of the glacier. And so you can see how at the bottom here, uh, it's kind of dragging. Uh, it's, it's getting caught along the bottom due to the friction. And at the top, it's going to be moving a little bit faster. Uh, and that unevenness uh, causes uh, the breaking to occur and, and, and changes in the glacier. So think this will be our last slide.